Okay. So, you know, one, one way to kind of showcase how programmatic would work for, let's say, a smaller travel advertiser in, uh, is just to give an example. So, let's just say you're a small uh, hotel brand and you have a, like a bed and breakfast hotel uh, in Europe and you want someone to come uh, and visit your site or your mobile app. And now, uh, using a, a platform uh, like the one we have, uh, you would enter in similar parameters to search. So, you would say, where do I want to target? Do I want to target these geographies, these cities? You would say, what type of interests do I want to target? You know, people uh, who are interested in travel, people interested in vacation rentals. Uh, and then you would just put in things like, at what time of day do I want to target and across which devices? And so if you're seeing a similarity there, it's very much like search and, and how you set it up. And you know, the one thing with programmatic is that it does give you the ability to dynamically uh, rotate and show different ads based on who is coming in. And so in our platform, we have dynamic creative personalization as well as you know, the programmatic media buying. And in travel especially, that is a very huge uh, combination to put together because what you see is huge conversion rate increases when you get dynamic ads combined with programmatic. We're seeing often 300% increase in click-through uh, from our hotel brands, you know, uh, tours and activity players that, that use a dynamic ad. And so just to give you an example, that would be if you know something about the customer, let's say someone you know is a, looking for a family vacation based on some of the cookies you know or some of their searching behavior, the ad you show them programmatically will be different than if it's an, somebody traveling with friends somewhere. And that will really increase the likelihood of clicking through. So what our platform does is it does, like I mentioned, it does retargeting, prospecting, dynamic creative personalization, so showing dynamic ads. And what it does is, based on your KPIs and your goals, we act as kind of an automated media buyer for you. So instead of you saying, place my ads here, place my ads there, we look at what your goals and your KPIs are and decision where is the best place to spend uh, your dollars. And so on the other side, on the supply side, we have access to about 90 plus percent of all the global you know, display, mobile, video, native inventory. So that when you're working through the platform, some of your ad dollars may be spent on mobile through this, dis uh, this inventory that's available through our publishers. Some may be spent on video. We will help decide, hey, based on the criteria, this is where to spend your money. And so, you know, one thing is why, you know, this is uh, different is that in the traditional model, you would have to go and sign up with each of these exchanges in order to access that supply of inventory. And that's not cheap, you know, a lot of them have minimums of fifty, hundred thousand dollars a month. And so what we do is we strategically partner with all the supply sources globally and we make their inventory accessible to you. So if you're asking, well, why would they do that? Because the customers we're actually working with are too small in terms of their spend to actually be customers of these partners. So for them, it strategically makes sense to access, you know, smaller travel brands, you know, maybe people spending as little as $5,000 a month through our platform. Uh, so it's kind of a win-win for our partners as well uh, on that end. So that's a great idea because you were mentioning that there were people in the, in the company coming from Criteo, mm -hmm. retargeting, it's yes. one of the most used uh, tools in the marketing uh, portfolio for marketers, but one of the yeah. problems that uh, Criteo had was that it, it required a minimum monthly investment that uh, mm -hmm. made it impossible for many small size companies to, to invest. So your solution is yes. great because it's as you said at the beginning, you're democratizing the usage of new technologies for companies that have this big, deep, deep pocket to do it. And also I think another advantage uh, uh, in your um, proposal is that with search, you focus mainly on the research and the booking phases. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with that, uh, the supplied inventory that you have, you, I think you could be covering all the phases, including yes. inspiration. Uh, and, and that's a great advantage for companies for not just through, trying always to compete yeah. in the most crowded uh, yeah, phase. One thing people don't necessarily realize is that, yes, direct response is a big part of what people use uh, channels like programmatic for. Uh, but it's actually pretty big in branding as well. So, you know, when you're a smaller company, you sometimes think, well, maybe I don't do branding. But even like you said, upper funnel inspiration, re-engaging users, mm -hmm. maybe that you like uh, want to retarget, but not necessarily looking to book right away. Um, I think programmatic is, is great for that. Um, one of the other, and I think when you mentioned uh, Criteo, 
you know, one of the other things, because, you, know, uh, you know, we've had customers that have come over from Curteo or AdRule or other ones and, and switched to us. Um, one of the things that we're, we're trying to do is bring transparency uh, to the space. Um, you know, programmatic sometimes has a, you know, uh, a reputation as being this opaque, mm. um, you know, oh, there's, there's viewability concerns. I don't really know if this is for me. Um, you know, one of my, you know, one of my pain points was when I was at a travel brand, I used Criteo, I used AdRoll, I used Programmatic, um, and it was a black box. Yes, I got some results out, but I didn't know where my money was being spent. And I didn't know necessarily how much of it was going to media, which creatives are performing better. And so what we're doing with our self-serve is saying, for better or for worse, you know, we're just going to open it up to you so you can actually see, hey, this is what's actually performing well, what's not. Because what we heard from smaller marketers is they'd love insights into how these campaigns can actually help their other marketing channels. And so by giving them more transparency into results and reporting and you know, exactly what is going towards media, I, th I think it helps the overall ecosystem. Um, you know, even though sometimes the results you're showing them uh, may not be in the best interest of you, your, co your company, I think it's just that transparency is needed in the space. Listening to you is like uh, li uh, listening to the uh, answer to the uh, marketeer wish list. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, that's uh, actually what we've been here for many, many years. And uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the, the you roll out your plans? There? Yes. So we've uh, so just as a background, we were doing programmatic for probably the last two or three years, but as a managed service. And really, the impetus behind this was we had a lot of customers that were smaller. So we were working with large brands. We had hundreds of customers spending hundred, hundred fifty thousand a month. But this was on a managed service basis. And then we started getting. People asking us, hey, can you know smaller brands? Hey, can we use this? Can we? Uh, and at that point, it, it didn't make sense as a managed service, and that was really the impetus to say, okay, in order for smaller brands to use this, it really needs to be less of a managed service and needs to be something simple enough that they can use and not have to pay huge fees. And so the, we really started this idea about a year, year and a half ago, uh, and then we rolled out the platform in, in beta a few months ago. Uh, and now we've officially rolled it out over the last uh, few weeks. And so just on the platform itself, um, we'll, get, we'll have about 100 customers already using the platform in the first six weeks. Uh, and then, you know, uh, one of the great things is that programmatic, while it's, um, you know, something that is, is, is uh, growing, it's still not a huge um, amount of all the marketing spend for these smaller brands. And so, as the industry grows, you know, I think next year they said it's going to be 50, over 50% of all digital non-search spend will be programmatic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're seeing just over the last three, four months, just the adoption and the, uh, the, uh, the desire to actually try out programmatic uh, in the market has actually increased, you know, tenfold. So I, I think you're starting to see this point, uh, you know, even in, in, in parts in Europe, where people are like, you know what, I, maybe I can do programmatic, maybe I can take advantage of this. And so, you know, I think the fact that in a few weeks we'll have close to 100 customers using the platform bodes well for kind of not just us, but the overall um, adoption of programmatic by smaller travel brands uh, in 2016. So I do think 2016 will be this kind of hockey stick uh, uh -huh. kind of growth for programmatic, um, especially among travel and e-commerce. Um. I'm sure that uh, uh, they will have success because I think you have uh, uh, a focus on what is really useful for marketeers. Yeah. Similar to what uh, Google did uh, with AdWords, a very uh, um, reliable and easy to use platform based on a transparent uh, model. Yeah. So that's why no, there is no small uh, company that yeah. argues that search is not one of their uh, <laughs> marketing options. And programmatic, the way you have redefined it, uh, it's like uh, uh, the other words for small yeah. companies. So they, they access that's that. Our vision. our vision is like the same way you know how search evolved. Initially, search was something that was outsourced; it was complex, mm -hmm. and then over time, it became easier to use. So nowadays, you know, even the the person who owns a grocery store or the person who owns a small, uh, you know, a small ten room hotel can go in, log in create an account and run an AdWords campaign. And that's really w where we think programmatic will be going. And so what we're trying to do is say, okay, let's take that step there. Because you're right, the, the mass adoption comes when 
you know, that single market or that single property owner can come in and just log in and create an account. So actually right now, if you go to our platform, that's what you can do for as little as $100, you can just say, hey, let me test something out on programmatic. And to me, that's just, you know, if that vision comes through where, you know, anybody could access this really previously complex technology, um, I think that will be key. But I think, like you mentioned, what had to happen is, you know, three things we felt from a business model perspective that we had to do in order to reduce barriers was no monthly minimum spends. That's a huge thing. So now people are like, okay, you mean I can spend two, three thousand dollars or euros? Yeah, that's a try. Yeah, just that's a try. Works. And then the other thing is no licensing costs. So yeah. we're a platform, but we're pay as you go. So, you know, people are sometimes wary, at least I would be, be like, oh, I don't want to spend you know, every month give you this on a platform licensing fee. So, you know, even though from a business model sense, yeah, we could make more money doing it the other way. It's just the, the barriers to adoption need to be first uh, overcome before, you know, you can get mass adoption. So that's why we decided to go with no minimum spend and we decided to go with no monthly licensing fees. Yeah, I think it's, a, as I said, a very small approach because you have, have it here. Most of the people thought that uh, technology should be applied on in this uh, in this uh, landscape on a B two B model. So you create middleware to help others to sell services to the final uh, right. customer. But you have gone the other way around, which I think yeah. it's a, it's the right solution. So you have applied all the technology to help yeah. the final clients. So exactly. It's not B two C exactly because it's a it's a company yeah. that is using yeah. your service. But at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, it's it's, uh, the analogy is perfect because yeah. uh, the small uh, troubled company that using your services is like a final consumer for you. Yeah. So you can, your technology development that you have made is perfectly uh, designed for, for them. And obviously there are always more people, uh, potentially users of that technology that oh, intermediaries yeah. uh, using that technology. So the last, thanks uh, a lot Ryan, for your, for your <laughs> no, uh, sharing with us uh, all the these uh, really interesting uh, projects and uh, we wish you the, the, the best luck and uh, we hope the next year we have the same opportunity to talk Definitely. and you tell us uh, that you have no 100 users, <laughs> <that's> thousands <laughs> of users exactly. across the world and, uh, and uh, I'm a firmly believer of uh, programmatic I think that's uh, one of the few ways in which uh, really you can take control of your investment mm -hmm. and know what is going on and, uh, and it will help as well to uh, uh, reuse the large differences between the competitors in, in not only the travel vertical and travel industry yeah. but in other travels, in other verticals like e-tailers, e uh, retailers. Yeah. Uh, so you, the last question, uh, you mentioned that around 60% of your clients come from the travel vertical. Yes. But I guess that you, your platform is also a great opportunity for traditional retailers yes. who want to become e-tailers yes, and uh, they are in most of the countries they are late mm -hmm. and uh, they, ha they are struggling for years investing in, in AdWords and obviously yeah. the results are not the same as uh, the yeah. large players. So I think you have uh, you can give them a great opportunity for, uh, so to compete. Travel and e-tail are, are two biggest you know areas and that's where our expertise is, is people from travel and people from e-commerce and you know we know those industries really uh, are really looking for something at a you know that's not as expensive as search because like you said it's very hard to make margins running search if mm. you're a smaller brand um, but programmatic it, you know the, it's not as expensive a landscape at least not yet um, and so there's a lot of opportunity there if you can just make it easy enough to use and we're hoping to try to do that. Last piece of advice for you uh, for a company who is beginning to compete now with no large uh, marketing yes. uh, budgets don't you think that uh, embracing your solution will be even more uh, uh, um, uh, productive for them to focus on uh, video ads and mobile ads mm -hmm. instead of trying to compete on the desktop of the space? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And we're actually seeing it. I mean, the biggest adoption this year has been mobile. Uh, mobile has now crossed, even on our platform, over 50% of the spend that's going in there is, is going through mobile. But the biggest ones that are getting the most uh, increase is video uh, and then also we're seeing a huge uh, increase in like native uh, content marketing as well and now the ability to do that programmatically is is there uh, so that's like you said those are actually very high conversion uh, opportunities for brands that invest in it now obviously the only thing is some smaller brands don't necessarily especially on video there's production costs and stuff to invest in that so the, a lot of our customers don't start with video they start with either display on mobile or uh, they do some um, 
mobile in-app or, or advertising, but over time they're looking to, to move to video. And I think video is a great uh, investment uh, down the road as well. Great. Thanks a lot for Thank your you. time.